Well, Shakespeare was a man who was alive at the end of the 16th century, lived to the 17th century, died in 1616. He was the son of a glove maker, and he was a man who studied the world. I think of Shakespeare as someone who took in everything that he could. Uh, that's the natural world of Stratford, which is where he grew up. It's a tremendous amount of imagery from nature in Shakespeare's writing, certainly in comparison to other writers of his generation. He's someone who paid attention to the world. He was also someone who read a lot. Uh, I don't, maybe the single most interesting thing to me about Shakespeare uh, as a writer is how much he seems to draw from the world around him and in particular the information he could get from printed books. So a library like ours, which is the single greatest library of surviving material from Shakespeare and his world, uh, is one where you can actually see this writer in action, making connections here, 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 and here. You know, in one play he'll be quoting pamphlets about exorcisms from the late 16th century, and then another it'll be an herbal about different kinds of plants, and then something else about falconry. And You know, this is someone who's kind of a magpie. He sees things and he says, yes, I'll take that, and I know what I can do with it. So I see him as a very opportunistic reader and writer. And what's interesting about that for those of us who think about the historical past as also information uh, and potentially another world that we can enter by reading is that here's someone who puts us in contact with a really a vast archive. And uh, we have a web catalog, we have a, a card catalog on the web. You, know, you can search our books by author, title, date. But you could also search our works by going through the plays of Shakespeare. And in fact, one of the things that we've tried to do is open up that second portal so that someone using the plays themselves could use them to navigate into this. Essentially, it's a web of information. So the Folger Shakespeare Library is the largest collection of original materials uh, connected to Shakespeare and the third largest collection of early English books in the world next to the British Library and the Bodleian Library. So Mr. and Mrs. Folger, who assembled this collection, lived in New York. He was an executive for Standard Oil. When he, when he uh, looked at his collection, he decided to give it to the nation and put it here. And so the Folger is one of the few places where you can go and really understand the linkage between this major writer, the, the one secular writer who's read by half our planet, and the world that helped produce him. I mean, clearly this was an incredibly talented person, but he didn't just come out of nowhere. And uh, one of the things that a library like this helps us understand is that there are moments when a particularly rich culture matches well with the gifts of a particular person or writer. Um, and I think that was the case in this very self-conscious courtly world uh, that Shakespeare lived in, one that's becoming more urban, it's the beginning of exploration, it's the beginning of mercantile capitalism. A lot is changing. And here he is, very perceptive, charismatic person who knew how to write. 